Time for some Nicolas Cage. Ooh, that's a hot mug, guys. Hey guys, this is my review for what even is the title of this movie? The Unbearable Weight of Massive Talents. Essentially, Nicolas Cage as himself, dealing with things about himself. But then he gets pulled into a birthday party for a super fan who may have some untrustworthy background to him and these two become super friends. All the while he is unwillingly pulled into the CIA sort of operation. Chaos ensues, hilarity ensues, and it just gets a little silly. But I have to say that I actually really did enjoy this film because it actually got its idea a lot better than a previous idea. For those of you who remember this, Jean-Claude Van Damme did a TV series with Amazon really in the early days of Amazon's shows and whatnot. It looks funny. My name is Jean-Claude Van Damme. I used to be super famous. If you watch the trailer, it's funny and there's a very good reason to it. All of the good bits from that show are in that trailer. When one sense is gone, the others hide. I don't think that applies to vision when driving. There's a reason why they never got in any kind of second season. Unbearable Weight here does have some of those same issues that were in that show. However, it takes a lot longer for them to come up and you have a much better time with it than you normally would. I enjoy this movie because it really does delve into Nicolas Cage as who he is. It doesn't just rely off of references to his other films. Yes, there are those in here. Like it starts off with the ending of Con Air, which I love that movie. The fact that they actually do make a couple of jokes about it and face off in a bunch of other movies is really, really great. But it's also just seeing how he views himself in terms of work, like he views acting as work. He doesn't view it as a passion. He views it as something he likes to do and he likes to work. All of these references to all of these very obscure films that Nicolas Cage does in fact watch and love and enjoy. And it makes more sense to me of why people and friends of mine that who are into these very weird and obscure films that no one else watches are fans of Nicolas Cage as well. It's because Nick also knows these movies and he just has this massive amount of film knowledge in his brain. Seeing him kind of come to the realization through his fictitious family in this film that he is kind of a dimwit and he's kind of a dope in terms of how he actually should be. He's just always after the spotlight. He's always trying to one-up himself. He's always got this need to be talking about himself where, where he doesn't know that. So when he goes to meet Pedro Pascal, who by the way is a gem in this movie. He's one of the best parts of this film. He's a super fan who also happens to own this extremely expensive vineyard in Spain. And these two bond because Pedro is or Javi is a super fan. He's got all of this memorabilia about um, Nicolas Cage and everything. And there's so many jokes that reference to the both of them and also to Nicolas Cage himself. All the while he accidentally gets pulled into this CIA operation because they think that Javi is running this criminal organization that has kidnapped a girl. But probably the best part about this movie is that these two want to create a screenplay. They want to make a movie together. The screenplay they are talking about is the movie that is literally happening in front of you. It's talking about two characters kind of coming to terms with each other. It's a comedy, but it's also a self-actualization film. But even then they start to kind of delve into the action orientation and they think it's stupid. And that is kind of their way of apologizing before it happens because the third act of the film is a fucking mess. It definitely takes a bit of a dive and I have a feeling that they couldn't really do anything about it because all of a sudden it just kind of becomes an action movie. And that self-realization, that realism, that down-to-earth kind of just two guys bonding really does kind of go out the window and it becomes more of that dramatic funny bit. Not to say that there isn't already a lot of funny bits in this movie. There's a part where these two go on acid and it is hysterical. People in the theater, and there wasn't many people in this theater when I saw it, we were all just dying. It was a real good funny laugh. But it does delve into this very very generic sort of story. There is a villain that you just don't care about. But thankfully, the film knows that it's running out of material, that it's run its course, and it ends as quickly as it can once this third act sort of starts. And it even tries, maybe to some it would seem successful. I think it just barely makes up for itself of how it ends. But either way, the unbearable weight of massive talent, which is a hysterical fucking title, 
is the idea of what that Jean-Claude Van Damme show was trying to be, but it nails the much more humane, the human aspect. And it also isn't just jacking off to a bunch of Nicolas Cage movies. It also is just talking about the actor himself and just how he views himself. He has conversations with his younger self, which are fucking hysterical. There's also de-aging work that is done on his younger self, which is also pretty darn good. But in the end, I, I feel this movie is a fun time. Is it one that you're going to want to watch over and over and over again? Maybe the first two thirds are really, I would almost say the middle of the movie. Once he goes to visit Javi, that's when I would say the movie is gold and right up until they start to find out that there might be something about each other that they don't realize is when the movie starts to kind of get into that generic uh, realm that I would say that it kind of loses itself. But otherwise, I still say it's a fun time. If you want a good laugh, watch it. If you're a Nicolas Cage fan, I would definitely suggest it as well. So in the end, I'm going to give the unbearable weight of Massive Talent a 4 out of 7. I was happy to have seen it, I was happy to have watched it, I had a good chuckle, I had a good laugh. If I never saw this movie again, I would not care. I, I would want to rewatch maybe the middle with any of the Pedro scenes. Uh, Pedro Pascal, again, is fantastic in this movie. But aside from that, that's really it for me. But have you guys seen this movie yet? Are you guys big Nicolas Cage fans? What's your favorite movie of his? Did you go and see this movie? Let me know in the comments below. Otherwise, guys, I hope you enjoyed the review. If you did, leave a like. And if you're interested in more, subscribe. Also, what did you think of this new anamorphic lens? I guess I should have started that, but this is a 16 millimeter. Um, admittedly, I have to be so close to the table that my groin is basically banging the wood right now. But I actually do kind of like the much more atmospheric, the, the wider lens. I have to shove the chair here, but tell me what you guys think. If you guys think this is a good idea, I might be sticking with this. That was kind of the idea of buying it. I didn't realize it would be this wide, though. So, anyways, that's all for me. I'll see you guys next time.